Harold Sigurdsson, was born in Norway in the year 1015. His father, Sigurd Sir, held the title of the King of Ringerike, and was also among the most affluent leaders of that region. In accordance with numerous Icelandic sagas, Harald Sigurdsson traced his lineage back to his great-grandfather, Harald Fairhair, the first monarch of Norway. Thus, Harald possessed the ancestral and legendary royal blood coursing through his veins. Harald's early years remained somewhat enigmatic, yet he was portrayed as a young man of greater stature and fortitude than his contemporaries. He shared a bond of half-brotherhood with Olaf II, his elder kin, who reigned over Norway. Harald held Olaf in high esteem as a role model, aspiring to emulate his achievements. From his youth, Harald harbored grand ambitions, dedicating himself to the stewardship of his father's lands and diligently preparing to establish himself as a distinguished warrior. In the year 1028, a substantial uprising emerged in Norway, leading Harald's half-brother, Olaf II, into exile. By 1030, Olaf had returned to Norway with a formidable retinue of warriors, aiming to reclaim the throne. When Harald, then a mere 15 years of age, received news of his brother's homecoming, he rallied 600 men to join Olaf's forces. On the 29th of July, 1030, Olaf and Harald forged ahead into a confrontation against the forces loyal to Canute the Great, who had now seized the crowns of Denmark, England, and Norway, subsequently dethroning Olaf. This clash would become renowned as the Battle of Stiklestad. Harald fervently fought for survival and the restoration of his brother's monarchy. The engagement was fierce, exacting heavy tolls on both factions. Olaf, sustaining injuries to his knee, neck, and ultimately succumbing to a hostile spear thrust, met his demise on the battlefield. Harald, though displaying remarkable prowess in combat, was gravely wounded. With Olaf's death, a youth like Harald faced bleak prospects, tantamount to certain demise. Canute the Great emerged victorious, prompting Harald into concealment, his solitude exacerbated by grave injuries and a lack of allies. He sought refuge on a remote farmstead in the eastern reaches of Norway, where he remained for a considerable span, convalescing from his injuries. Upon regaining his strength, Harald embarked on a journey northward, traversing mountains towards Sweden until reaching Kievan Rus, where he was received by Grand Prince Yaroslav the Wise, whose spouse maintained a distant kinship to Harald. Yaroslav was enlisting generals and leaders for his military campaigns, and he welcomed Harald into his service. Possessing strength, relentlessness, and sagacity, Harald demonstrated natural leadership qualities, despite his youth. He engaged in campaigns against the Poles in 1031, showcasing innate leadership prowess. He further contended against the Byzantines and the Tudes. By the time Harald was yet to turn 20, he was already an accomplished warrior, with none daring to challenge his swordsmanship. With no abode to return to in Norway, for Canute would have dispatched him, Harald resolved in 1033 to set sail for Constantinople with his contingent of 500 men. They became part of the Varangian Guard, an elite unit within the Byzantine army. Harald and his retinue also assumed roles as personal bodyguards to the Byzantine Emperor of that era, then known as Michael IV. During this period, Harald experienced numerous battlefield encounters. He got in engagements spanning the empire's borders, confronting Arabian pirates in the Mediterranean Sea and clashing in inland cities of Asia Minor that had lent support to these pirates. He participated in campaigns extending to the banks of the Tigris River, where he played an instrumental role in capturing 80 Arab fortresses. Even within Jerusalem's confines, he fought, safeguarding pilgrims from marauders, in accordance with imperial directives. In 1038, Harold embraced the Byzantine army's cause during its expedition to Sicily, with the objective of reclaiming the island from the Muslim Saracens. He captured four additional cities on Sicilian soil, eloquently showcasing his military acumen and might. He engaged in further battles, including the Southern Italian Revolt of 1041, leading the Varangian Guard on several occasions. 
Harold was also dispatched to combat in Bulgaria during the Battle of Ostrovo. By this juncture, he had evolved into an experienced warrior, having borne witness to much of the known world. However, pondering what transpired in Norway during his service in the Byzantine army persisted. Harold took part in 18 major battles and countless skirmishes. Following his leadership in numerous campaigns, he garnered numerous honorary titles from the Byzantine Emperor. Despite his extensive combat experience, a sense of belonging in Norway still eluded him. Nevertheless, his unwavering loyalty was insufficient to secure him a prominent position within the imperial court. Following Emperor Michael IV's passing, the empire plunged into a state of uncertainty and turmoil, marked by conflicts between the new Emperor Michael V and Empress Zoe. It was during this period that Harold found himself incarcerated. Despite conflicting accounts, the reality remains that Harold held many loyal warrior comrades, individuals who had borne witness to his battlefield prowess. He had earned the respect of his fellow Varangian soldiers, securing their loyalty, which ultimately facilitated his escape from captivity. Under Harold's leadership, the Varangian guards stormed the royal palace, marching triumphantly to the throne room and forcibly removing the new emperor whom Harold, infuriated by his imprisonment, blinded. Subsequently, the deposed emperor was exiled to a remote monastery. Throughout his sojourn in the east, Harold accumulated substantial wealth and safeguarded much of it. He sent shipments of gold to Yaroslav the Wise to keep them secure. With the restoration of Empress Zoe to the throne, Harold sought permission to retire from the guard's service, yet his request was denied, given his immense value to the empire. Nevertheless, Harold discerned that his destiny no longer lay in Constantinople, and he fled with a contingent of loyal men, despite the adversities imposed by Empress Zoe. One of his vessels met its end in the embrace of intersecting iron chains, but Harold's ship safely navigated the Black Sea, carrying him onwards to Kiev. Having spent over a decade abroad, Harold felt as though he had lived in a state of perpetual warfare, yet he understood that new battles still lay ahead. In 1042, in Kiev, Harold entered into matrimony with Elizabeth, the daughter of Yaroslav, a union he had previously sought but was denied due to financial constraints. Now, Harold stood as a wealthy and battle-hardened warrior, intent on recapturing the Norwegian throne that had eluded his brother Olaf. During his absence, the Norwegian crown had passed from Canute the Great to Magnus the Good, his nephew. Harold planned to initiate his campaign against Magnus by invading the Danish coast, showcasing to the local populace that their king offered no protection and was incapable of aiding them. News of the imminent threat posed by the seasoned Harald Hardrada swiftly reached the ears of the Norwegian King Magnus, who was abroad at the time. Consequently, he returned to Norway with his entire army. Upon the counsel of his advisors, who warned of the impossibility of the young and inexperienced Magnus prevailing over the veteran Harold, a pact was struck in 1046. According to the agreement, Harold and Magnus would jointly rule Norway. A year following the accord, Magnus passed away without leaving heirs, thereby granting Harold sole control over the Norwegian government. However, Magnus had bequeathed Denmark to Swain Estridsen, an action that incensed Harold. Thus, he declared war against Swain, leading to a series of clashes between 1048 and 1064. The majority of these conflicts comprised incursions along the Danish coastline. In 1048, Harold pillaged Jutland, and in 1049, he raised Hedeby, at that time Denmark's largest and most pivotal trading settlement. The naval battle of Nisa took place on the 9th of August, 1062. Harold arrived with a fleet of 150 Viking ships, awaiting Swain's appearance, which was delayed. Consequently, Harold released some of his non-professional soldiers, only for Swain to arrive later. The battle commenced at dusk and endured through the night. Both sides remained evenly matched for an extended period until Hakon, one of Harold's men, initiated attacks on the smaller Danish vessels from the flanks. Swain lacked reserves, and their formation crumbled. As a result, 
they were defeated at daybreak, and Harold emerged victorious. Recognizing that his capture and defeat were inevitable, Swain leaped into the water in an attempt to escape. Despite his battle with Swain, Hacken, who was a good friend of his, still respected him. Consequently, Hacken allowed Swain to swim to the shore, affording him a chance to flee. Although Hacken became the hero of the battle, he was swiftly apprehended when Harold uncovered his betrayal. However, Harold, in a way, understood Hacken's motivations and refrained from sentencing him to death. Despite triumphing in the battle, Harold could not yet claim Denmark as its sole ruler, as Swain remained alive. Furthermore, the years of warfare had crippled both nations' economies, prompting Harold to offer an unconditional peace to Swain. Thus, after a lifetime of conflict, the two kings finally reached an accord. Following the settlement with Denmark, Harold redirected his focus towards a new conquest, England. His claim to the English throne was grounded in a pact established between Magnus the Good and the prior ruler of England, Harthacnut. Upon Magnus' death in 1047, Harold assumed his claim. However, the reigning monarch of England was Edward the Confessor, who consistently made it known that both Harold and William, the Duke of Normandy, could succeed him. Regrettably, these actions culminated in bloodshed later on. After Edward's passing, Harold Godwin's son swiftly ascended to the throne, an outcome that incited the ire of Harold Hardrada, the King of Norway, who opted for confrontation. It's important to note that the King of Norway was named Harold in Norwegian, while the King of England was named Harold in English. In March of 1066, Harold began assembling his forces and arrived in England with a fleet comprising 300 longships, intending to plunder the English coast. Upon reaching Scarborough, the local populace attempted to resist the Norse king's forces, albeit unsuccessfully. The Vikings, not inclined to waste time, set the town ablaze, leading other settlements to surrender. News of the Norse invasion swiftly reached the Northumbrian Earl Morcar and the Mercian Earl Edwin, who mustered an army to confront Harold to the south of York in the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Nonetheless, Harold achieved a decisive victory, and York surrendered to his forces. Only upon learning of the situation did Harold Godwinson march with his army to face the Viking forces of Harold Hardrada on the 25th of September, 1066. Meanwhile, Harold left a third of his soldiers in his base behind, donning lightweight armor, as he believed he would be dealing solely with the citizens of York. However, Harold's heavily armed forces approached and ambushed the Viking army at Stamford Bridge. A massive Norwegian Viking stood in the center of the bridge and single-handedly killed 40 men, allowing Harold to regroup his scattered forces and form a shield wall. Harold descended into a berserker-like state, much like the unnamed soldier, a trance-like fury that drove him to fight aggressively without a shield, gripping his sword with both hands. However, as the battle unfolded, he was struck in the throat by an arrow and died instantly at the age of 50. With the demise of the King of Norway, the Battle of Stamford Bridge drew to a close, marking the end of the Viking era. Harold Hardrada was a warrior through and through, a veteran of a hundred battles, living by the sword and having fought across the globe. Undoubtedly, he was an incredibly ferocious man. Nonetheless, anything can happen at any moment, even to those who are exceptionally strong and powerful. Although he met his end in England, Harold's governance style, characterized by his militaristic approach, earned him the moniker Stern Ruler, a title that reflects his uncompromising leadership style. From childhood, Harold grew up amidst military conflicts and often resolved disputes through brute force. However, he is also recognized for his role in introducing Christianity to Norway, influenced by individuals he encountered during his travels. We must contemplate the significance of Harold Hardrada as one of history's most renowned Viking kings, a figure who left his mark through impactful military conquests and contributions to the spread of Christianity in his homeland. Nevertheless, one might question whether his ambition led to a tragic and premature demise, underscoring the repercussions of his audacious behavior. Feel free to share your reflections on Harold Hardrada in the comments, it will be intriguing to learn your perspective on this matter.